Hey what's up everybody welcome to the third video in which we actually move pieces in a smooth manner. as you can see we can also drop them where they need to be and uh, they don't have any restriction right now we'll do that next episode but as you can see we can then kill pieces and they just go here on the side and you can do that for both and it looks a little bit like this so by the end of this episode you should have something that is a little bit more concrete with that piece on the side and smoothly dragging things at places all right i hope you guys enjoy please leave me a like and also a subscribe because once we hit 8,000, we can start looking into doing this special move as well thank you so much have fun peace I'm going to be opening up the chessboard today because we're going to need to work on the update function quite a lot. So we're looking to create a um, mechanic and when, when you click on the piece, you pick it up and when you release, you just drop it where it should be. So looking at our code we had last time, we have all these sections here. We're going to collapse them just for clarity of this video. And we are also going to create um, one more field. This field will be a chess piece field, but it's not going to be an array. It's going to be a simple uh, chess piece on its own. And I'm going to call it currently dragging, which will mean I am currently dragging a certain piece, right? And I'm moving that around. This is a target. Now, the majority of what we're going to be doing right now is inside of the update function. So I invite you to open it back up and I'm just going to collapse things about hovering. This is something we need. We'll just keep it there. But then if we are um, landing our raycast, so if we are mouse overing uh, one of the board tile, then we're going to be looking at three things, um, actually two things. Are we clicking or are we releasing our click? So going with the input methods, we're going to do get mouse button down. Very important to use the one down. And I'm going to be using here zero for left click. So that's if we press, right? So if we press down on the mouse and then we're also going to have of course the release so if input i'm just going to copy that over i can't type this morning just need to warm up my finger a little bit but uh if input get mouse button up so if we're releasing our click if we are releasing the mouse button okay so say we are clicking on something, the first thing I'll check is, is there an actual piece where you're clicking or you're just clicking on an empty tile? So we're going to do if chess pieces at the index hit position dot x, hit position dot y. Now remember, we have this information right here. So we match the tile and we have the proper index. If this one is not equal to null, so if there is something, then let's expand the if bracket and we're going to do our code in here. Now I'm going to input a little bit of code that is not going to be useful at the moment, but we will come back to this part and I'll call it, um, is it our turn, right? And I'll just do it if through at the moment. So the reason I am just putting temporary code here is because in the future we'll have to check, Hey, is the pet, is the piece you're selecting right now, is that one white if it's the white turn or is that one black if it's the black turn? At the moment, since we're just making all this and we want to be able to test, we want to be able to move pieces around, I am not going to keep the notions of term. Um, did I say term? Of turns. So there's, no gonna, there's not going to be any turns. Anybody can move all the pieces whenever they want. So that's very good for our testing. But then, of course, towards the end of this tutorial, we'll have to turn back um, this line here into a simple, if it's our turn, then we go. Right. So the next part here, is where we actually assign our new variable main. So currently dragging is going to be equal to chess pieces and we'll grab a reference. Uh, we're not going to create a new copy. We're actually just going to grab a reference. That's going to be very useful for us in the future. Um, X and Y don't seem to work. Oh, right. It's hit position dot X and hit position dot Y. And we're going to leave this function here as is. I think that's all we need for the moment. We'll need to come back eventually and do things such as um, this piece, what type is it? And also what are the available move? But at the moment, let's just take care of moving this piece around. So that that's going to be quite enough. Now let's have a look if we are releasing the mouse button down, but not only that, uh, if we're just releasing the mouse button down, it's not really helpful to us if we don't have any target. So let's make sure we have a target first. If currently dragging is not equal to null, and then we also release the mouse target. 
Then here, I'm actually going to grab the position in which we started dragging our piece, and we can do that with the information we store inside of uh, inside of the piece. So previous position is going to be equal to the it's going to be equal to a new vector with the currently dragging current x and currently dragging current y, just like so. And this way, we can know what was the position of our piece before we release our cursor, which is what we're about to do now. Now with that uh, information in mind here, I'm going to create a new function called move to, which will also return a boolean that I'll call valid move. So I'll be sending in um, this type of information. So I'll send in my chess piece and also where it needs to go int x and also int y. This is going to be a function that I'll create actually. <laughs> so let's just make sure we don't, don't define parameters in here. Um, and what do we need to do here? I am going to say hit position.x and also hit position.y. As you probably guessed it, this function is going to be used to um, check if our move is valid. And if our move is valid, then we're going to move that piece over. Now I've put it under a, um, I had a, a boolean return value because in case it's not valid, we still need to do something. So if it's not valid, then of course, let's not move the piece, but let's also lose that reference. So I'm going to say currently dragging position transform um, it's going to be equal to the get tile center with the previous x and also the previous y. So this way at least we reposition our piece back to where it should be. And then we're also going to drop the reference. And that should be enough for the moment. I think we're going to have to come back here to to make sure we can have smooth, um, smooth moving of pieces in the future. I will take this move to function and generate something out of it. And here it is. So private boolean move to. And um, just to stay clean, I'm going to put it under operations here. Okay. Now, oh, sorry, you probably don't see that. Let me just, there you go. We're going to start by grabbing a vector to int with the previous position in it. So previous position, and we'll do currently dragging the, actually new vector to int uh, with the currently dragging I call it currently dragging here. Let's move it to CP because we might have um, interference with what we have at the top or not, not at the top, but the local variable of the class. So I'm going to say current X and CP current Y. Okay. Now uh, with this information in mind, we can then start moving things around on the logic of the board as well. So to change the logic on the board, we're going to do chess piece at the new indexes. So X and Y is going to be equal to the previous piece we moved. So CP in this case. Um, and then after that, what we could do is take that previous position. So for the chess piece at the position, previous position dot X and previous position dot Y, those are now gone, right? So the piece moved from that spot to that spot. This, therefore, this one is now null and has no more reference. We can then also position a single piece. And to do that, all we have to do is send in the new position. And then this uh, function will take care of actually moving it to the right place. And for the moment, let's just return it through. So let's just assume that all the moves we do are valid just for testing purpose at the moment. Um, I think in the next video, we're going to be taking care of actually restricting those moves to whatever uh, the piece can do. Now let's give this a try. Um, obviously, there's going to be quite a bunch of error in there. Um, let's try and move this rook somewhere else. As you can see, I'm click, hold and dragging and those pieces are moving. Now a bunch of problems we could run into, such as if I put two pieces on top of each other, uh, one of them is just going to, to die in reference. As you can see, I can't move this one anymore. In fact, if I try to move it, I'm moving the previous piece I had. So we're going to have to correct that um, pretty much right now. So let's go back, but at least we can see things moving. So at the very top here of our function, we're going to be looking at if there's another piece where we're going. So is there another piece on the target position? And we'll do so by doing a chess piece at the index x, y as we did earlier, if that is not equal to null, that means there is another piece, which might be a good thing, right? So when you defeat another piece, you take it, you take its position, and we can check all of that within this if statement. So let's start with a chess piece. We're gonna define that piece. Let's call it other chess piece. You know what? OCP, there you go. Um, it's gonna be equal to chess piece at the index, the new one. So before we change it, that's very important that this line is below. We can do x, y, and then do the check. So if our chess piece dot team is equal equal to the ECP, actually OCP dot team, 
then it means that we're dragging on top of a piece that already is ours, right? So let's do a return false. But before we do that, do we need to do anything here? No, actually, so if, if the piece we're going on top of is our piece, we're going to return false. And by doing so, um, let's go see the move to. By doing so, we're going to enter this statement here. So we're going to see current currently dragging is going to be equal to null. So we're putting it back to where it should be after that, because we're coming back from this function and this one is false. So let's give this a try, see if it fix our problem. So that's cool, that's the other team. But now if I go here, hmm, my move was actually not cancelled. Oh wait, it was cancelled just because in memory this this piece here, um, I ate the other piece with it. <laughs> that's why it didn't work. But here I'm clicking, hold, and I'm dropping on top of this piece. Doesn't work anymore. So this move is cancelled and the reference, they still exist. So they can still move around um, and there's no issue with them. All right, so we got this one out of the way. Now maybe we should be looking into um, defeating our pieces. But before we do so, I'd like to remove every statement here where I move those pieces um, through the transformed position um, instantly, basically. We made a mechanic in the last video. We start making a mechanic in which we could smoothly dra drag um, those pieces across the board. And I'd like to implement that before, before we go any further. So. What I'll do is I'll actually go back on the chess piece, the base object here, and I'll create myself a public virtual void called set position. And it's gonna take in one parameter, actually two parameters, so one, the position, and finally a Boolean force, of course, is gonna be equal to false, so there's gonna be a default value of false. And what I'll do in here is I'll just set the desired position to the new position, but then on top of that, if we are forcing, then I'm going to assign this position right away. So position is equal to desired position. Else, if we are not forcing, we're not changing the real value, right? So we're not changing the, um, the transform that position. So we'll have to do that somewhere else. In a update statement, so private void update. And within that update, all I have to do is the following. Transform position is going to be equal to vector3.lerp. And we're lerping in between the position we're in right now the desired position where we should go and also um, just another value a constant value we could do well that's not really constant if I put time to delta time but I'll do times 10 here so it goes quite fast you can modify that if you wish the, the smoothing to go a little bit slower or faster and I'm going to duplicate this for the local scale as well because we're about to use it same thing but instead of changing the uh, changing the position we're changing the local scale here there and there right now you probably guessed it we also have to create a um, a function for that as well so let's do set scale all right so local scale desired scale there we go now those are all virtual so in case you want to override it for a certain piece you're allowed to do so in case your art is uh, for some reason your art is not really on the same metrics or I guess you could also override uh, the set position as well if your pieces they don't all have the same pivot point so if you know that one of the rook is made in such a way that it's not completely right then you can add that offset um, in, in that function Okay, now with that done, instead of calling the following, so transform the position, I'd like to call the set position and then just send in what we have here. Now this should work well, but only when we fail a move. So only when we drag a piece on top of a piece that is already our team. Um, let's put that mechanic at other places we implement the position. So I believe we also have one under the position single piece so here instead of doing the transform that position we'll call set position send in the get tile center as a parameter instead which is a vector 3 and do we have it anywhere else so let's do dot transform transform dot position 
I think we're pretty much good right now. So all our, our moving around should technically be, oh, <laughs> we have an issue here. All our moving around should technically be uh, smoothed. Now the problem we're currently facing with uh, the pieces disappearing is because they also changed their local scale and their local scale by default is zero. So let's make sure we put that on vector3.1. Um, this way it actually, well, it doesn't do that. <laughs> and uh, the desired scale is equal to one. So here it is. I have a feeling that it went back to, um, hmm, I have a feeling that it spawned, but it didn't immediately. Yeah, so it seems like our force boolean is not really made properly, which I just remember, I just overwrite a couple of seconds ago. So let's go back on the board where we do a set position in the generate, not generate, the um, position single piece here. Let's add the force value. Oh, sorry. Here, I believe yeah this way they're not going to start in the middle however they're going to start directly where they need to be there and then if I move this around as you can see we have this smoothing move which is much better all right it's starting to look like something however um, we just ate this piece and it didn't do anything really and if I just click around without dragging I'm also moving this bond so that's not that's something we have to address pretty much right now. So one of the problem we had with dragging the piece after with just a single click without really dragging is because we're never dropping the reference, just like we're dropping it when we do a invalid move. But if we do a valid move, um, let's go ahead and drop it anyway, right? So let's copy this line here and put it in the else statement of the valid move. So this way, at least when we, um, when we keep on playing, you could say, at least if I click places, I don't drag the same piece anymore. I can still hold this one if I, if I start my click on it, but if I just click randomly, now I don't get to move it around anymore. One of the next bug we're gonna have that we haven't really tested out yet is if we start dragging and then we release our click, but we release it outside of um, our raycast. So we start dragging and then we stop dragging, but without our cursor on top of a tile. Uh, in this case, this code is never ran and we just get stuck with this reference on. So we're going to make sure that doesn't happen by actually adding some code under the else statement. And that code should be very, very similar. So we're going to say, if we are currently dragging something and input get mouse button up zero. So if we're releasing our click, then we're going to say, well, currently dragging is going to be equal to null. So we're dropping our reference right there. But we would also need it to, um, to go back. So we need to move it back to where it should be. And we can do so by taking this piece of code. Well, maybe not this one. No, yes, this one, because it's an invalid move. So if we're not doing a valid move, let's take this and copy it down there. If we are not doing a valid move, technically, we should just go back to where we were. And um, do we have access to the previous position here? No, but technically we have access to the currently dragging position. So current X and current Y. Awesome, let's give this a try. Things we have to test is um, dragging this outside of the board. So nothing happened. Inside of the board is good. Click, hold, outside, nothing happens. Let's move this here. I'm going to click old and put it there. It seems to work. All right. So now the next chapter is going to be about removing enemy pieces. So when they die, when they merge together like this, um, one of them is dead, but physically they are still there. I just can't move them, but in the memory, they are of course not there anymore to make sure that this doesn't happen. We're going to have to manipulate this object that already exists and move it somewhere else. We'll be doing that inside of the move to function. So here we check, is there another piece in our target position? If it's our own team, let's bounce back. But if it's the enemy team, then we need to do something with that piece. And for that, I'll keep a total of two new lists. So I'm going to set a breakpoint so I can know where to come back. And um, I'm going to go back at the top here. And under my logic, I'll create two lists, a private, build our private, Technically, you don't have to do what I'm about to do, but it's just a little bit of cosmetic that you could add to your game. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to grab those pieces and I'm going to put them on the side of the board. You could definitely just go ahead and delete them or destroy them, but 
that's what I'll do. So I'll just call this one dead whites and dead blacks. I'm also going to um, instantiate this area right there on the spot. So new list of chess piece for both of them. And then we'll go back to our code down here. And we're going to say if the um, the other chess piece, if its team is equal equal to zero, then it's a white team enemy. And therefore I can do, oops, keep hitting the wrong keys on my keyboard. Okay. I can do dead whites dot add the other chess piece. And then we have to move this thing somewhere else. Um, let's just go ahead and create the same function on the other side here. There we go. And then my goal here will be to call the OCP dot set scale. First, I'll set the scale to something like uh, 0 0.3. You know what, this value should be at the top actually. So I'm gonna go at the top here and do another constant. We could say, it's not gonna be a constant actually, it's gonna be a serializable field, private float, theft size, we could be 0 0.3, which is less than half of the size it currently has. So I'll do that here, that's my set scale. What other parameter did we need? We needed to have the um, Boolean force as well. Oh, actually we did, oh, I see, okay. So we sent in a vector three. Let's do vector three dot one times dead size. And we're not going to force it. So it's it should shrink up um, with time. Same thing down here, but we also have to set the position. We have to move it outside of the board. So set position. And here I'm gonna come out with a very weird formula. Let's do eight, eight, which is gonna be um, eight up time size, which should be right next to the bounds of the board. So eight times tal size. Oh, we have to wrap this up in a new vector three as well, I forgot. So eight times tal size, and then we'll do the Y offset. And then, hmm, I think it's minus one times tal size. Does that make sense? We'll see, we'll see during the, the game. Um, and then do minus the bounds, plus a new vector three, which is gonna be the tile center here. Could we reuse the code we actually had before? No, so we're not able to reuse the code we had prior for the sole purpose that um, we're, we're no longer inside of the board, we're totally outside of the board. So here's what I'll do. I'll just put it in different lines so we can follow. plus a new vector three with a tile size divided by two. Zero tile size divided by two. Plus the vector back. And that's gonna be, um, that's gonna be to go in a certain direction. So I'm gonna be stacking them in a certain direction. They're gonna go from uh, the, for example, if this is a white team, it's gonna go from the white team side over to the black team side. So times, a certain spacing in between them, I believe 0.3f. We're gonna have to put that under a different float as well in a second. Times the count. So that how many do we have right now? So dead whites dot count. And that should do it. Okay, that's a very, very long vector. Let's have a look back at this thing. Um, so this should start the piece on one of the sides. So that's a very specific point on the board. Uh, that should be, I believe, bottom right for the um, the white team and it's outside of bounds right so seven times tile size is the last tile size but now we're doing eight minus the bounds so we can have uh, the center of the board properly set and then that's the center of um, a square and then that's the direction in which it goes so if we don't have any anyone dead if it's the first one that's dead we're actually disregarding that completely if it's the first one then we're moving a little bit ahead every time and actually it should be front, I believe. We're gonna give this a try. If it doesn't work, we'll, go, we'll come uh, play around with these values. But before we do so, let's change this to something else. Um, I'll call it depth spacing. And we're gonna set that float at the very top here. No, I don't know what values are good. We'll change them with time. But at the moment, let's give this a try. So this should only work right now since we didn't do the function for the black team. We should, it should only work if one of these, 
white piece die. And as you can see, it went over here. Let's keep going. And it just looks something like that, which is quite neat, actually. Um, I don't think we need to do anything else. I think we have what we need already. So it looks a little bit like that. Uh, maybe the spacing could be a little bit more. Maybe the original position is a little bit off as well. All of these things we could we could actually um, fix in there. You know what? I'd like them to fill up this whole position here. So let's go ahead and on our chessboard, I'm going to increment the size of depth spacing to 0.4. Let's give this another try. So now there should be um, a little bit more distance in between the pieces. Actually a little bit too much because now we're going overboard. Zero three seven five should do the trick. Will actually be very close to doing the trick. Yeah, it's not bad. I'm actually liking it quite a lot. So I'll just drop that by two five and I'll save this. Maybe now the piece can be a little bit bigger. So I'm thinking about zero point five. And that's the last week I'll be doing. looking good okay so we'll keep it this way we'll actually go back and code the same thing for the black team so I'll copy this over oh I just copy this position over actually and we'll change what we need so here instead of being um, eight we're actually going to start at I believe it's gonna be minus one and here is going to be eight instead then we can do the vector 3.back and the dead blacks.count. The bounds remain the same, uh, the center of the board also remain the same. And we'll give this one last try before we go to the next chapter. So it seemed to spawn the right place. Alright, white team is doing good here. And black team is also doing good. So it should look like this when you're about to be in the end game, actually. It's gonna look with, with less pieces on the sides, but yeah, no, it's looking quite good. So that's if the pieces are dead. Finally, one more thing we're gonna be doing today is um, having some sort of dragging position change. Um, so we don't really see which piece is it that we have in our hand right now. We know that uh, if we click here, we drag, um, we drop the pawn. We know it's a pawn because we clicked on it, but it's still there's no visual feedback. So we'd like to, as we move our cursor around, we'd like to be able to know which pieces that we have in our hand. So we'll be addressing that right now, and we'll be doing it in the update function, I believe. So roughly, roughly somewhere here. So right, we have the raycast, but then after the raycast, we have nothing, and we're going to be doing that right here. So if we're dragging a piece. And we can know that by checking if we're currently dragging something. If we're not, well, this value is going to be equal to null because that's that's what we set it on. Um, so we know if we're currently dragging a piece. What we have to do next is going to be a little bit complex if you've never done it before, but we're going to be creating a new plane in which we'll cast our ray that we had earlier. We'll cast it on top of that plane. That new plane, consider it as a, um, as a collision object, right? So I'll call this one horizon plane. And I want to put that plane, that invisible plane, I want to put it with first a normal. So first we have to put the normal of that plane, which is going to be vector3.up. So it's going to be a plane that is like when you create it on default in Unity, it's just a place that is facing up. The normal is facing up. So you can walk on it. It's like a floor, right? But then um, the point in which we're going to set this plane in space is also going to be vector 3 point up but times the y offset which means if our board is a little bit higher in in the space in your scene then we are going to place this horizontal plane directly on top of your board and if your board is is you know if it has a weird orientation though that might mess up things so that means hmm if your board has a weird orientation like a small tilt 
maybe you want to do transform that rotation actually transform that normal I'm not quite sure but I'm going to assume that your board is standing up at the moment um, else we might have to change this value in the future to something that actually takes the normal of the transform actually the normal of the board now the next thing I'll do is I'll declare myself a float called distance that I'll set on zero initially and now we'll do a raycast but this time we will start the raycast with the plane so horizontal plane dot raycast with the ray we created earlier and this one is from a long time ago right so it's this one that we have at the top so we're taking the current camera screen point to ray and we're casting that against our plane and we're going to return the distance value which uh, by the way this is going to hit pretty much 100% of the time right um, but if if we don't hit it just doesn't go through the if statement but it's going to hit because the, the plane actually sits like it doesn't have a specific width or, or length you could say it, it just take the whole space and as soon as you hit it anywhere it is it's going to return you a distance position so from the camera to where the plane is you're gonna have the distance in between that and after this you can actually get the exact point by doing the following you can say ray dot get point at a certain distance and with that in mind we're going to be able to take our piece and actually position it right on top of this so what i'll be doing right here is actually take our piece so currently dragging and i'll say set position with the get point distance which is going to give us a behavior that we will have a look at in a second it's quite a cool behavior, but we're going to be modifying modifying it uh, in just a bit. So as you can see here, that's what we get. And we also get it when we're outside of the board, which is exactly what I wanted to see. And now we're able to test things such as invalid move put us back to where we should be. And we now have this behavior. So that's quite cool. Um, what I'd like to do is I'll just want to when I pick up a piece I don't want it to be on the same level as all the other as you can see I can just like merge with them which is not exactly what I'd like to do instead we're going to put a small levitation effect on it so we're going to put it above the rest it's going to be quite simple because we can do that right here in the currently dragging and we'll do so by doing a plus vector 3 dot up times a certain offset we could say drag offset this value of course does not exist so let's go ahead and grab this put it at the top with our art configuration so serialized field private float the drag offset and um how far do we want to have to drag this i believe we could do 1.5 actually so this should be big enough and now as we play this we end up with the piece okay well no that's a little bit way too much actually let's let's change that to 0 0.75 maybe oh and i changed that while i was not in the run mode but uh yeah something like that could work right and maybe it's a little bit too too low so i'll increment that to one yeah that should do the job that's just enough okay so we're going to be wrapping this up for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please leave me a like on the video. Leave me a subscribe. Once we hit 8,000 subscribers, we can start working on these special moves. So that's going to be quite fun and quite complex because we have to do a simulation of other moves. So that being said, um, just drop me a like, drop me a subscribe. Would appreciate quite a lot. And make sure that you tune in because the next time we're going to be working on actually making these pieces move with their real respective move with uh, the limitation they have in the game you could say so yeah thank you so much i'll see you soon cheers